Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things. It is paper pumpkin time. This is the January paper pumpkin, pumpkin Lovely Lavender. I have already done all of my Valentine cards. So, all that I do here today will be extras for next year, or if I find some extra people to send them to, I can send some out. And then I'm also going to... Uh, put some of them up for sale on the community Facebook group for where I live. So I can never have too many Valentines. Um, I did just for fun, go through the entire current annual catalog and I am going to show you all of the red tabs. There's probably, I was just curious this is everything that has to do with love or has hearts. And there's also a lot more in here that uh, still can qualify as, you know, like right here we have radiating stitched dies, which are what's called a web exclusive. So there's a heart. And I didn't even look, I didn't even flag this page. So uh, there is a lot more hearts than I expected. And the reason why I have all these flagged is that Libby and I crafted twice earlier this month working on Valentine cards. And so I wanted to get uh, an idea of what I had in my inventory to use to make cards. I have posted episode four of my January Love Fest. So today is my break. It's actually pretty late in the day. I got my paper pumpkin a little bit early. Usually I get it around the 20th and I did pick it up yesterday in the evening. And today I had uh, that episode four to finish up and a couple of other things to send out. So I am just now getting to it. So it's probably going to span into, this is Friday the 19th, so it'll span into Saturday the 20th, unless I can do a late night. We'll see how I feel. So I have not opened the box. Again, did I say what it was called? Lovely Lavender. And I already do know that it coordinates with a particular stamp set and I did just buy the paper. Uh, so I see that they've done something new. They no longer do the black lettering, which is how it was easy for me to show you what these look like. So we'll see if I am going to have to stamp all these out. Uh, basically, I will film this part, see what it looks like, and I'll come back with a stamped version of this if you guys can't see it. But I just answered my own question because we now have um, and I, I think this has been for a while. So if you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, which anybody here watching Paper Pumpkin probably has this particular Paper Pumpkin, you received it in a subscription. If you ignore the mail talking about the kit, which I typically do, I don't like to spoil when I'm going to actually get to working with it. It's kind of a surprise to me. So for this particular episode, I did click on the link and noticed that they have been including covers that you can... Oops, I stepped on the camera. Sorry about that, folks. So anyhow, they have included the case-sized <coughs> color graphic. So if you have extra um, thin cases... Like this is what where my chamois lives is in a skinny case. So this size case, which they don't sell the fat cases anymore because they don't have wood stamp, wood stamps anymore. So this is the size case that this particular printout is for. I have printed out four of them. I'm going to be printing out all of them and here is why. Uh, not really knowing that they were switching their... Uh, stamps. Now the photopolymer stamps that come in the cases, their regular stamps, have not had the the black lettering on the, the plastic for some time, maybe a year or two. So I am surprised it took them this long to switch. However, surprise! Look at that. So now I have access to the artwork. I had been scanning this artwork 
to put in my paper pumpkin sentiment database. And now that they no longer do the black and I know how to print these out, I will be able to load them up. So I actually think I am all current. And the next thing I need to do, and I think I have hooked in to each paper pumpkin episode except the two Christmas ones, which I got really behind over the holidays. So I need to create the Christmas article. Um, I go through the Christmas kits so fast and I just eat them up. I use the, pretty much all of the materials each year. It seems like I sell a bunch of cards in November at our artisan market. And then in December, I am frantically making cards for myself to send, of which this year I think I sent 65 out. So that's a lot of cards, and I really need the paper pumpkins to do that. So it's often that I am so busy making cards, I don't get a chance to post it all for you guys. And I don't know if everyone uses all of their... holiday paper pumpkin kits like I do, or if you hoard them and save them for future years and only use them a few at a time. I tend to, aside from the Christmas ones, I tend to be a hoarder. And these Valentines that I make will probably, unless I sell a bunch of them, which I did the Christmas cards, I sold a bunch. So if I don't sell a bunch, I will have extras for next year. Um, if not, I will be selling them and then I will be using up this kit. So as I have already said in my love fest, I have a special box now and all of my paper pumpkin kits for the last seven years have been collapsed into that special box. I have pretty much in the last seven years used up my October and November kits for Christmas cards. So I don't typically have those left over. Uh, but I like the idea of creating like a Christmas box and I keep all my extras in. So I do have extras of just general Christmas stuff that I bought specifically for Christmas, even if I didn't use them all up. So that next year I'll be able to break that out and be sure to use up my extra bits from the previous years. I'm trying to be better at using up all of my old stuff before I start using the new stuff. That's kind of a new a new thing for me started this fall. All right, so we now know that you can download from the email that you get if you are a subscriber. If you aren't a subscriber, this is one of the added benefits that Stampin' Up! provides you. That is it's not something from me, it is from Stampin' Up! And then I do have online a Paper Pumpkin Sentiments tool that you can see this as well. If you are uh, on your phone or at a computer and you don't want to go break open your kit and you know that in the last couple of kits there was a particular sentiment and you'd like to know which one it is, you can go to my search tool on stuffandthings.com. So we have love. Just a little something for you. Happy Valentine's Day with and a sprig. All right, we have, oh my gosh, gorgeous grape. This goes with the lavender DSP. I do not own the lavender kit, but I did buy the DSP. And we are definitely lavender. I'm using a new setting on my camera. We'll see how well it works for me. And because like I said, when it gets dark and I don't have the natural light, my lighting isn't the best through my camera. Oh, a whole bunch of dimensionals. Some linen thread. If you haven't heard already, I have been using for at least the last year and a half, maybe two years, all of my paper pumpkin um, dimensionals and double-sided adhesive. I had been hoarding them forever. And a couple years ago, I finally, with these giant 
containers I had just filled them to the brim I'm like I am not starting a new container I am going to use what I have so I see that we have a label die cut and this label die cut it ends up being a really nice window opening so I do haven't really looked at the instructions but I did end up laying it down so that I can see there there's three designs I see multiple envelopes eight total envelopes two designs as you can see here uh, so then we have some tags there should be four tags I would imagine yep four tags and then there will be four dropout pieces here. Oh, and I wonder. Uh, I love when they do the front to back. So I will be able to take and cut these down the middle. And then cut them, the fronts that are the A2 size, into whatever I want. I also, because it's white core, I can do any treatment, the sanding treatment that I love. And I always show you guys. Um, okay, so we have sprigs. We've got uh, some light colored sprigs. These are Lost Lagoon. We've got Garden Green, a big sprig, and a small sprig. The lavender card front, I forgot to mention because I was busy talking, uh, has different front and back, which is great. So that will give me even two more. So that's eight different designs, uh, which is great. We've got some square with gold or gold purple foil we have some layers there are two more pages of leaves three more pages of leaves ah and then we have some nice big sprigs lavender sprigs two sheets of them with four loves these are crumb cake on the outside with white in the middle and I will not spend the time to cut all these out until we are done with the unboxing and I will do this on my own time but here is the love and what it looks like we do remember have the very large matching love stamp that we can do fun things with and then we have a bunch of labels some tiny labels there's a couple of small words with oh we have one word with and then I also have, so it's with love and then we have a larger die cut with round ends or curved ends and then a long rectangle so those are all the parts and pieces I'm gonna go away now and start thinking about alternatives I as I said I have I initially thought when I brought the catalog out today that I would list for you guys every single stamp set that had love or heart in it. And then I re realized how many flags I had put in here. And it's like, oh, that's way too many to go through. So you might want to head to your catalog if you have bought some different sets. Just look at your sets. Quite a few of them, like if you bought the bundle, the die cuts will have some hearts. I bought the new sentiment hybrid called Thoughtful Moments. So this is with the new January catalog and it you'll see it has all these words, but in the dies there are these cute, really cute. I like hearts that are odd shaped for some reason so these teeny tiny five up hearts I've already put in my little magnet die holder because I will want to be integrating some of the hearts into that so be sure to take a look I know that um, for me I don't like collect Valentine sets and hearts so I pretty much only have one die set that is dedicated to hearts and then I do have, like I said, these odds and ends that have hearts because Stampin' Up! is really good at using up all of the metal. If they have extra metal, they will give you extra 
you know, this set that I'm talking about, the hybrid with the words, has stars, flowers, hearts, rainbows, and clouds. Because there was extra room, so they, they filled up the metal so that you get your money's worth. Uh, so be sure to do that. And I will go away now and do a bunch of thinking, and I'll come back with any fun prep or any materials that I come up with in addition to this little tiny cute die hearts uh, that are current. Uh, I do have some stuff, but lo my Love Fest episodes are focusing on some current as well as a bunch of retired products. So I will try to come up with current stuff for Paper Pumpkin since um, I do try to use current as much as I can for the Paper Pumpkin episodes. So stay tuned and I'll be back. All right, I am back and I have some prep ideas for you as well as colors. I wanted to show you some colors because I figure there are some people in the world who don't like purple or don't like it as much as would be used in this kit if you didn't add any other colors in. So I went ahead and got my swatches out and I went ahead and did the Garden Green Lost Lagoon because I already grabbed those three inks and I think that uh, you could absolutely add crumb cake since that is one of the surfaces on both the card bases and in one of the envelopes. I wanted to also point out that the envelopes are full depth if you wanted to break them all down for more cardstock. So then I took this piece, the busy piece, and I'm going to also put this piece out because I have some extra colors that I think will work, especially if you want to not be so purpley. I thought that Sweet Sorbet, Berry Burst, Melon Mambo, and Wild Wheat. I thought Wild Wheat would make a nice accent for a masculine card. So those are my color options. Not sure what I will actually end up doing. I have pulled out Garden Green and Crumb Cake thus far, but I might try to introduce a card or two with these colors. I wanted to talk about this linen thread. I actually have used up the new, the linen thread changed to being on a cardboard spool a while back. And I always keep using that up first because I love how it's curly. So I created some bows, some long ones for you to see. I have one tendril that's just separate that you could add somewhere underneath a bow perhaps. I also took some of that and put it, I did. I doubled it up, folded it, pulled it through the circle, and now we have this wild little curly mess. And then here's a more typical, a, a double bow. Oh, I hope you guys could see that. Now that I'm looking through the camera, all right, so a, a simple double, two long tenderly singles, and then this, which I hope you could see, which is doubled folded. So what you have coming out the top are four strands, and then just an extra piece that I liked how curly it is. So that's for that. There are no uh, bling per se. So I would think that the white or silver loose sequins would be good. Or if you have any iridescent sequins from any other kits. So I think those would be very pretty. And then there are 
some adhesive backed sequins that would be nice. Uh, there's the white in the neutral. Pastel adhesive sequins. I actually took these apart because I noticed it was two rows or two sheets and there's a small sheet and a big sheet. So these pink ones are nice. You could even do gold if you wanted to add a metal. And then we have the sequins trio has a white, it's a frosted, and then a pinkish to lavender. And that goes. There is, this is actually, we've got uh, flat backed pearls that look beautiful. Festive pearls, of course, would be nice. Even the red probably on this would be okay because it's a little bit on the, the pinkish purpley side. Iridescent pearls. You can actually color those with your blends as well. I have this really fun set. I'm not sure. It's supposed to be for shaker cards and it's circles, like an outline circle, and then you get the insides of the circles. So these would be really delicate to play with. Uh, but I see purple in there, which is why I set it out. I see purple and green. Uh, so you could use a tiny dot of glue to apply that. Okay, I'm looking through to see if there's anything else fun in here. I think I've got them all. Okay, so next. I pulled out embossing folders. This of course is one of the sets that you could use anything really, but I pulled out all of the pretty ones. So we have the distressed tile, painted posies. I'm assuming this is current. I was gonna look at this before I showed it, but see how it has the long uh, tendrils. Those go with the lavender. So you could actually, this would be beautiful with it. Uh, Mary Melody, exposed brick and time-worn type. I think both of these would be great. Anything that's distressed like. I do have some DSP that I think is a nice match. This is only the current new January catalog DSPs that I'm showing. Um, today. I am looking for the name of this. This is Perennial Lavender. I will show you the one side. So this is the coordinating suite that goes with, you can see the, the match. There's the one side of the six sheets, and the backs have all of the floral elements. I will show them individually because it's hard to see the patterns. This is a perfect match. And notice, you see the little bits of white in here, and that's where the silver, loose silver sequins, I think, will go with all of what I'm showing you today. And then, there is one more set of paper floating around here. There it is. So this is a celebration. It is called Most Adored. Uh, it has a pink and red side that you could certainly use if you were going to move away from the lavender and just use the stamps. Ironically, the stamps, underneath the instructions for the stamps, remember this is the first time I've seen the stamps not have the black on the acetate. So this comes underneath the instructions. So it's the stamp artwork, which is awesome. So if you wanted to go it alone and use up the lavender 
as is for just the eight pieces and then you wanted to continue on this set would be wonderful there's what it looks like with these stamps <clears throat> but the back goes with the lavender and it's all golden white foil and there's one more pattern two of them have hearts we have falling hearts well they're upside down they're rising hearts not falling hearts and then there's hearts with these flowers The final thing I wanted to share, I think that's plenty of materials. There is a sentiment dye hybrid that was just released in the January catalog. I have the name here, it's buried. It is called Thoughtful Moments. <clears throat> it coordinates with another hybrid dye set that has hearts, a whole bunch of hearts. So this particular, trying to find the embossing folder. Okay, so the embossing folder kind of tells this the tale. So you have on this embossing folder, if I get rid of these, there you go, now you can see it. Thank you, oh happy day, thinking of you, love you, hello, you make me happy with sympathy, celebrate just because and get well. So you emboss them. And then after you have embossed them, I love how I have these things out perfectly and then I go to video and I can't find them. It's so funny how it works that way. All right, so you emboss. And I think I have to go away because this is important. This is like the, the key. I will be back in a moment. All right, well, that was easy. It was underneath all of the bling that I had shown you. So this is what it looks like. You could cut a six by six. I keep all of my cardstock in A2 size that's right here by my desk. I will also say that I do not know why and I haven't found out the reason, but I, in my order, if you watched my unboxing with Libby, uh, they sent me some basic white five by seven. So for free, just as a free gift. I thought that was great. A little surprise, didn't expect it. I don't know if everybody's going to get them, but I hope for a time, everybody will get some. So when you emboss, this is what it looks like. You do have to pick your words. I was focusing on love you, hello, and make me happy. With sympathy was a bonus. Then after you have this, you can choose to ink up. These letters are raised. So you can see there's some, um, I did Highland Heather because I, I figured it was already going to be pretty pretty bright. So I have an example of that. So you, you cut these out. Here is the, these are extra pieces um, of what it looks like cut out. This has a little bit of that Highland Heather. So these are the extras that are, although Celebrate came out complete. I didn't plan that, it just happened. So you do have to pick and choose. And then I did a couple of extra treatments. So here is the Hello with Highland Heather. Then I took Garden Green and I cut out a Love You in Garden Green and run, ran my, my favorite thing these days is to run my craft white spot over the surface. And here is the Love You. It got a little bit mottled I probably put a heavier coating, so that needs a little bit of work. The hello is perfect. And then here is the you make me happy. So I'm going to play with these on my uh, mix and matching for the showcase. I'm looking around. I think I have covered everything. I haven't worried about hearts. Uh, you're probably wondering what's the deal with no hearts. I don't know that this kit has to have hearts. So I am going to proceed with these sentiments as well as the stamp 
set sentiments that came with the kit. And I will be going away to do some mixing and matching. But before I go, I want to show you the very sweet with sympathy. Isn't that cute? So I'll probably throw a sympathy. This, these will make perfect sympathy cards. So I will go away, get myself organized for some mix and matching, and then we'll call this one done. I think that I feel bad if anybody doesn't like purple or lavender. So, or they have people who don't like purple. But remember that with this part, this there's four pieces of this. You could cut it up. You could cut it up into pieces. I actually took one. Oh, I had one more little thing I could share. So I took the crumb cake and I cut it into three pieces uh, just to kind of show you the ways you can extend the materials, especially if you need to do something other than focusing on lavender. So this is the distressed tile first. Then I took my sanding block and I sanded the whole thing. Then I took this square, then I cut it up. This is two and three quarter square, both of these. And then this one is uh, whatever the difference is, maybe one and a half. I didn't measure it. Let's measure it. It is, yeah, one and a half. So then I took and ran through the, oh, I didn't even show you this. The Timber 3D is the other embossing folder I think is perfect since it's a natural woodsy material. But underneath the wood, you'll see subtle hints of the uh, tile. And I had done the tile, I had roughed it up, and thought I wanted to show you that you could actually double up your embossing folders just to give it a more bu busy, uh, without doing the um, time-worn type. So this is non-type, which is nice. And then there's the time-worn brick as well. So cutting up the pieces of the bases gives you some added ways of eliminating some of that purple. Because remember, we have this piece that is a watercolor wash. And I think that this, if you wanted to stay away from the purples, you could uh, focus on like the berry, berry Burst, which is a new color for this year, a returning color. Uh, so there's the berry burst uh, and you could cut this into smaller pieces and put it on some solid cardstock maybe with embossed and do some layering all right so that is it for materials i will go away now and prepare my final mix and match to share with you so stay tuned All right, I am back and the sun is going down, so I've had to close my curtains and put on the light, which I hate to do. That's why I started this morning. So I am gonna try to crank through this last bit. I have been loading up on my supplies list for the article, for the blog article, uh, things as I use them, because at the end it is always a pain to try to remember everything I used. I haven't done any photography yet either, so it means when I do the photography after this that I might not remember everything that I went over. Uh, so you might have to freeze frame the video on anything that you are interested in casing. So I did some simple stamping this time. I wanted to give this love, this giant love, a little attention. So I did, you know, we didn't get a lot of extra stamps because the big love took up a lot of the space so I did a quick happy valentines and you can put this sprig anywhere you want you could even do repeat pattern like I've done the love with the happy valentines day and the sprig if you wanted to get really fancy you could take a stamp and write marker and just do valentine and, and put it around I did a love with the sprig as well, and I don't think I did anything on the back. So when I was working on this love, I came up with an idea that I want to show you how to do it. It shouldn't take too long. I also promised you a non-purple card. So these were my colors, and I picked to work with Berry Burst today. 
So I have stamped the love in Berry Burst, and then I am going to show you if you use, let's see, I did some samples that may or may not be here. Here we go. So I grabbed all of my gold metallic-y uh, markers that I have uh, swatches for, and I was looking for the right width of the gold. Uh, the one on the far left is too fat. The two here that are really sparkly are too sparkly and not gold enough. And the one on the right is definitely not going to work. That's a wink of Stella in gold. And I did some squiggles and I settled on this gold, which is an Artistro. And I've already created a shop list in my Amazon shop and I will link it in the description And I am priming my pen and I'm going to test it. I was considering this this berry colored red that has a little bit of gold in it. Um, but I decided to show you it'll be easier if I do some contrast. So I am working and I've got this. So you can see what I am doing. I can even zoom you in a little bit. The idea with too thin, oh, and I hear hub is up, so I'm probably going to have to stop and uh, close my blast doors. So I did a couple of fun things with this love. This kit, actually, because I didn't really have anything going on, I just spent the whole day working on it. I really had a good time. Like I said, I like to rotate my uh, paper. I do this with coloring as well, and I'm also trying to keep my shadow away from the image so you can see very clearly what I am doing. So I don't know if you're already anticipating what is next after I do this. And I am not going to demo it for you this time. And that is, of course, cutting out the love. And I actually cut out the love using two different ways. And I will just show you what it looks like after the fact and talk a little bit about the time difference between the two different tools that I used. One is ultra inexpensive, and I have been actively promoting it just because I think that it gives people access to a look of something die cut that is fussy cut that is so much easier to cut than with snips. Again, I am not the best fussy cutter. I have really bad hands. So for me, I uh, love to find ways to achieve the fussy cutting look without fussy cutting. So I don't know if you're timing this. I am not going to speed it up because I want you to know how long this takes. It's not very long at all in my opinion. I put a little dot in there because it's supposed to be a little loop. And then I will go in here and also do a little loop. Oh, and I can do... I don't know if I did this E on the other ones. We'll find out when I bring them out. Alright, so there is the look of the handwritten outlined love in gold. This is the Artistro metallic gold. So then I took, oh, I hear the door is opening. So I'm gonna pause a minute and get the, get myself situated for filming while Hub is in the room behind me. All right, I am back. So I don't know where you guys are in the world, but my mom is in Washington state and they have really horrible cold weather and snow and blizzards and ice. So they are down at the barn, which is where we, when we go there in the fifth wheel, we live down by the barn with the horses and they're trying to redo the, um, the main 
well pump, not the pump itself, but where you can get water. And that's the water where we hooked up and Hub rebuilt it maybe five, six years ago. So they're having a problem with it right now. And so I had to relay that to him and took a little bit of time, which for you was just a mere second. So here's the love. It's not perfect. Uh, I went ahead and did a purple. Well, here's this one, the love without any outlining. And I just saw this sitting here and went, oh my goodness, I need to cut out the purple love. So here's what the the white and crumb cake love looks like. Here's the love that I cut out. Oh, interesting, this, I didn't get that middle part. That does come out. And then here is my lined love. And the lined love, I hand cut this one out. And both of these hand outlined ones, I went ahead and broke out my brother because I was curious. It has been a long time since I've used it. And here is the outline piece of the brother cut love. It took less than a minute to cut. The prep was not too bad. I'm, I used to be really proficient at it. And the only trick that I had having not used it in a long time was that my mat isn't as sticky as it needs to be. So this love, nope, the other one. Um, it shifted, so this got cut in half, and I just used some scotch tape to tape it back together. Uh, put it back down and, and held it with my fingers as it was doing its cutting thing so that it wouldn't move. And uh, that was a good success. I would say that it took, and I could have done a whole sheet of these and it would have still taken one minute. So I could have stamped them in different colors. I almost cut um, this berry burst, but I knew I wanted to demo the outlining. You'll see that, like for my eye, I did a much better job when I wasn't under pressure for these two. So that's just something really fun that you can do with the love to dress it up and make it look somewhat like the provided white with crumb cake. And you could heat emboss this in white on crumb cake if that's the combination you want and then you can still fussy cut. The fussy cut tool will be uh, in my shop. It is the fussy cut tool that I do demos quite often with. And this is it right here. And uh, it's a swivel blade that is just is marvelous and really saves my fingers from a lot of pain and agony. All right, so uh, then we go back to our simple stamping and you can see that you can add a popped up love here if you wanted. And I have, in addition to the hybrid kit, which I have not learned the name of, so I'm actually reaching for the packaging. It is called Thoughtful Moments, and it has the text elements that I showed you here. A love you, and a, you make me happy, and a couple of other sentiments. I have then also done them. I finally cut them out. I am looking for them. In white, and I hadn't shown you that yet. I also wanted to, I'm looking for them. Where did I hide them? So many things on my desk. Oh, I see them. Okay, they got buried, of course. So, from here, we jumped over to hand coloring those. Here is what, these are the ones that I inked up. I did Highland Heather, not gorgeous grape. And then there's love you, you make me happy, hello, and then the little with sympathy, which I think looks a lot, if I were doing the sympathy one, I think it looks a lot better when, here, and I'm going to zoom out now, so you can see more. All right, so the with sympathy I like outlined better. So we'll do some things with these as we do our layouts. And then the second set, I 
It is called Adoring Hearts Hybrid Embossing Folder. So I have cut out a bunch of fun, blingy hearts, as well as they're the type where you have your colors. I used the Luster specialty paper that comes in some just really cute colors that coordinate of all things with this set. I didn't do all of the colors, but here's three of the colors. And so uh, those are the background, and then I did, you can use them by themselves or you can add gold, or I did white. So that's all we're gonna have to work with of extra materials. They will all be on my blog. And here's the white, which I actually really like that. So I'm not sure what we're, what we're gonna reach for when I get to the layouts for you, which will be momentarily, I'll just leave these here. And I wanted to talk a little bit again as I finish up, and I might go away if I don't find this quickly. And that is the change to the way the stamp set works. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to uh, go away because I need to find my acetate pieces. There's those. Now I need the artwork. So they were provided us some artwork, which I showed you. And the way this is supposed to work, I believe, is this is the backing. So it has, this is the how it all fit. So if you want to make sure you put your stamps back the way they fit, it would be... It's so funny because this is, you have to actually reach under. I don't know that this is the perfect way to do this the way they did it because I have to go underneath. And this is the, the, the thinner acetate, which I would consider the top. Uh, so I have to go, if you want to do it this way, I'm going to try it. Because I think that's, let's pretend that this was pulled off. So it's the end, you're done crafting for the moment and you're going to gather up your stamps. And you're gonna put them face down on the thinner acetate. And it so that's what this extra piece is for when you find it and you're playing with it then you take the thin acetate lay it down everything is face down and then you put the harder piece oops and width moved on me it should be this way nope that way all right so this is new and there you have it. And I think you could either cut that off. You could fold this. I put mine in a packet with the instructions. And so I probably would not. I will leave this piece, but I'll probably fold it back. Get a sleeve out. This will all be able to tuck in to the sleeve with the instructions. And then I label it with what the spot is. And it gets put away with all of my others. All right, so the last thing I wanted to show is a quick demo. This is like a really quick, I don't think I've ever demoed this that I can think of. And it is just a very quick way. I'm looking, now I'm looking for my snips. Here they are. Uh, a very quick way to dress up these labels just a little bit is I snip in the middle and I make a, a V so that I end up with a, a fishtail. It's just the easiest way. I was taught this years ago at one of my first stamping events I went to. And it it is pretty much foolproof. So there you go. I think um, that concludes all of my little demos and such that I wanted to show with you. Oh, I have one more. So I showed you these DSP special or the DSP with the foil. And one thing with 
when you're working with these bases and you're cutting them up, they're a nice thick cardstock. They're at least as thick as the the uh, basic white. But the DSP is not. The DSP is pretty thin. And if you're going to use a strip and you want to pop it up, uh, you need to, to reinforce it. So I have reinforced, I did two small pieces of the gold foil DSP and I want them to be a nice popped up layer. You can see the, the, the shadow effect that I really want. But in order to make them n not crinkle or fold or, or warp in the middle and so I don't have to put so many dimensionals on, look I didn't even put any in the center. I do cut all my dimensionals in half. I show this all the time. So when I get my dimensionals in my kit, I just cut it right down the middle of the hex so that I can use halves and it really saves on material. So that is what I do with those. I also grabbed one more trim. It is called wavy trim. I only picked it because the wavy trim fell out of the box. So here is what it looks like. Let's put it on white. So I thought it would be a nice accent and would complement the linen. Um, it's possible if I am going to make any of these uh, for this year and finish them up, I will be pulling out some fancier gold trim. So I put those already on the supplies list and that's the 1 8 gold. I will possibly make a couple of bows but I won't do that today and it won't be in the, the images. And then I did settle on just these clear sequins for doing our layouts today. I hope I, I have enough. It seems like they get lost as I am going from design to design. So I have got some bases here picked out off to the side and we've got purple oh, and that's not going to really work very well because I was going to start with this uh, this is like they took the the one that's supposed to be a tag but they gave you the outline so that this itself can become a lovely piece and for this, I'll just put the crumb cake behind and then was going to, I have not popped this Happy Valentine's Day up, so I'm going to do that really quick. And then we will do some designs, mix and match layers. I've got some masculines to show you and the non-lavender, I promised, or a non-gorgeous grape layout. So these, I would take these and pop them up with little bits. I will do that so you can see what the extra shadowing uh, looks like when you pop them up. I even will sometimes curl the paper on the ends because I do like to have some dimension. And yes, they'll get flattened in the envelope, but hopefully some of the dimension that I've added will stay. So here is the cute lifted, and I have tried really hard. In fact, the instructions are buried underneath all my stuff, and I have tried my hardest to just not even look at them. So hopefully I will come up with brand new ideas. It's not often that I will have an idea that matches what the instructions are. So I'm just putting a couple of dimensional bits on this little piece because I would like this little piece to be over here. You could even, if you wanted, I think that I, I might cut off this, this end tail. I would cut off so that I can have it nested in here. But for the moment, it'll look just like that. And one of the things you can do with this braided trim is just have a piece of it underneath. You could have a piece of it hanging on the sides. 
and then I am not sure, probably down here for a bow. And again, I'm just using these loose sequins because they were nearby. And I love to do clusters. That seems to be the thing this year for me is to, I would add a pearl and a rhinestone gem, either iridescent, a set of iridescents or just the pearl color. So that is our first fancy design. This is really the only design that I came up with the rough draft of it before I got too far with my designs. Um, I was going to go with a white. This is just a timber 3D embossed background. And then I'm going to go a little bit more heartsy. And it seems as though white on white isn't the best color combo. Let's see. I also cut, in, the, in addition to the teeny hearts I showed you the die cut for, there are also some teeny tiny flowers with that same die cut that has all the words. The 3D words. So this color is, is like a knight of navy, but it matches very nicely here with these purpley blue tones. I would pop up the hearts. And I was just gonna, and these, you could dress these cute hearts up any way you want. Now I wanted to talk about the white on white. This is the labels from the kit and the basic white. You, I can't, I can see it a tiny bit, but if you put them close, see there's this shadow, so it's not as apparent but right up next to each other that this is a grayer white, as always. I just wanted to point that out. And you could probably even put this, this piece back that I went ahead and you could make it just with the hearts. Fancy. Oh my gosh, it's like a bomb has gone off. Come on, I should have just left it. But I thought some non-traditional heart colored hearts would be kind of fun. And I would pop them up. See, I don't, I think I would just want the hearts in, on a plain, more clean and simple design. I also think if I'm going to do white, I would trim this down. Be sure to do uh, top and side so you don't lose anything on this side. And then have a little bit of a matte showing for your white behind. But if you like a really busy card, you could certainly do the hearts and the lavender. And then you could even put the bow up there if you wanted. One thing I have not done a lot with is I showed you the DSP for the suite that coordinates. And I haven't used a lot of it, um, but there are definitely possibilities for this window if you wanted something different than either the white with the timber 
you could use any of these as a background. Probably those would clash because they're all floral. So don't forget that. Let's put a love on here. We've got three different kinds of love. And I have not popped this up. And I might want to do that as we go here. It just makes it easier. I don't want to pop everything up, but things that I know I would want popped up. Oops. My fingers have worked hard today. So you could see the mat and look at that heart isn't even totally overlapping. So if you wanted to make it a little busier, that is another possibility. That, and then we have some sequins. I would probably put a sequin on one of the flower lavender elements. I'm liking that really well. A little bit on the busy side, but very nice. Oh, the other thing I can do, I don't even know where it's at actually. Here it is, I found it. It's not far away. With love, like that. I also have This also is with the these hearts. This is one of the inserts. So there's three up hearts, and then here they're little squatty fat hearts. If we get rid of this. And if you wanted this to be raised up some and have some shadow, I would do two more whites and I would stack them and glue all three layers up so that you would see the edge of the white as part of the shadow. In addition to those fat hearts, the teeny tiny tall skinny hearts. I should probably put some out here. So teeny tiny. But they would replace the need for rhinestones. And then I do have, Stampin' Up! doesn't have any current glossy accents type glue, but they had some last year that was shimmery. If you got, it was during the holidays, so if you have it floating around somewhere, this is what it looks like. Shimmery crystal effects. I just didn't get a chance to uh, put any on there because I knew it was going to have a dry time. So that is also very cute, and you could even keep the sequins with the hearts floating around together. I really should be photographing this. But I'll remember, and if I need to go through and watch the video and see my designs. So let's move on. That gives us three or four different ideas for this. As always, I want photography showing at least 20 ideas. I don't think I'm going to have a hard time achieving that. So that is full size. Just, just checking. I want to show you a masculine. So I went ahead and I have, let's pretend, oh, that's already cut down. Look at that. Perfect. So this is the other piece that I went ahead and reinforced so that if I wanted to pop it up, I have my little pop-ups here. I was thinking of sponging the edges purple. 
and then here is the Timber 3D sanded on the crumb cake base. Then just having this be at an angle. Oh, and I wanted to do this love. And then with the different hearts, bits and pieces, you could have this be like a little signature here. And I really like those hearts. And if you're like me, you probably do have a stash of heart dies somewhere. I actually did not. I only have one set. Uh, and I did get this set with this year, the Adoring Hearts. And that is definitely going to be a keep forever. So here is a somewhat masculine. I mean, you could say those are trees. They don't have to be lavender. They can just be purple trees. Now I want to try I need to get all of these loves popped up and then let's also find the Happy Valentine's Day. Now I have, you'll notice that in here we've already got some of the berry burst color which was the color that I chose as my non-lavender. Oh, maybe that's where, oh, that's nice. Okay. And then if you even wanted to have that not count as trim and you wanted a bow. And then width can be at an angle and that could be popped up. I do want while I have these masculine pieces. I have one more idea. I'm not sure if this is too much, too tall, too matchy-matchy. Let's just take that out. I like this, any any shape, any direction. It could be even along here. And I like the edges being rough. I would just trim it short, but leave those edges being rough. These are just nice. So there's an idea. But now I want to go for gold. So I just had these pieces here. I'm going to leave the width. And I. Purple hearts. But I think you get the idea. Okay, then. There we go. That's nice. 
um, if I had a different color for underneath in the right squarish shape, I do not have, and I knew I did one. Oh, I see it. So there, you could do uh, this heart. So you see how I have stacked four layers. Um, one of the things that I challenged myself with today was cutting a bunch of smaller pieces because I will often use just bigger pieces and not show you how nice uh, it works to do a bunch of layering of smaller pieces to give it more dimension. And guess what I just found? I found what I was looking for. So let's... Do a little more with this background. So here's this background. We've got this berry burst. We have quite a bit of berry burst showing here. We are going back to feminine now. I wanted to get the masculines covered because I know a lot of us are going to be giving these cards to our male significant others. So if this was popped up, it, it's not as easy. I will have to very carefully cut out the pieces to be able to have this show better. I don't think I want to do that under as a too matchy. Oh, but you know what we haven't done yet? We have not done. There's a love you. And then we have not used any of these sprigs. So this love you, of course, needs to be popped up. Of course. And we either have a little pop-up piece somewhere hiding or not. That would be too easy. Probably behind here, yes. So I have my a sprig. I would think that these sprigs could be made more interesting if you took a thin gold. I showed you that I've got like a variety of the gold and I would take even the gold that I have right here. I will show you how easy it is to spruce up these leaves. So that's some spruced up little leaves. See this one, I would be wanting gold for my trim which I haven't even got out yet. So just pretend that's gold. If you don't want it so busy. There 
we go. Hope I remember that. Let's see if this lighter colored one works okay. And we'll do something just a different. You make me happy. You could do some big hearts. And let's see, there are some small sprigs in here of lavender. And again, this is the one that I would want to trim it off. I would pop it up. I might even have it snugged up next to the heart. Now that I have this, it makes me wonder if I could do this on the bottom and the gold on the top. So many possibilities I haven't even brought in I made a set of white hearts. And this paper, it's like shimmer, but it comes in green, light blue, balmy blue, and white. And I have used it in the balmy blue. And when you cut these out, I got all of these white, as well as the gold, the the big hearts so you could do that but I want I even made the sprigs there's sprigs with these two cute little sprigs that you could you could do vellum and just keep layering it up until you like it I am missing the other white heart Two of them. But I think we could just do that for now to get the idea across. And of course, all of my sequins have gone into hiding. So we'll put one there. somewhere right here. And then down here. Oh, there's one of them. So there is that. Now it's getting nice and dark, so I'm going to tilt this a little bit. All right, so I am going to move along. to my alternate base color. Not purple. We're going with not purple. Oh, and I even forgot to do the Happy Valentine's Day in the midst of this whole arrangement. So, as you can see, that would, would also go very nicely. And you could use whatever, you could do wild wheat, whatever you wanted to do. I think you could easily um, make this a somewhat masculine card, even though there's a little floral layer to it. Okay, so let's go with Berry Burst. So what I did with Berry Burst, this is my base. And you can see that most of these pieces 
will go with it. And I've got the luster heart that is definitely berry burst. I've got these little hearts. And then I also created a berry burst sponged floral piece. So this will look very similar to the ideas of what we just uh, did with the wash watercolor purple. And then this can easily be turned into a, another fishtail, which I didn't do earlier. I tell you, this I had so much fun today. And that I just finished making a whole bunch of Valentine cards and Valentine videos. So clearly that tells me that I am a Valentine person and I was not done with Valentines yet. All right. So this popped up. If you guys could only see the, the desk to the left of where I'm filming. It's the bomb that has gone off, but I know that when it looks like this, it means I've had a happy day. So I'm okay with a mess. And now that I have more space and everything has its place and it doesn't have to get buried somewhere in a trailer, it is a very quick cleanup at the end. Okay, so we've got we have this giant sprig. Now the giant sprig, I would be trimming off because if you look where I would want it, I just would definitely be wanting to trim this piece off because I would want to go ahead and have these showing up down below. I would put gold on them, especially to go with the gold floaty hearts. And then you've got all these different possibilities. See, I can just cover the bottom. See, no purple at all. It does not ooze purple. Now, let's simplify it. For those of you who, who see me going crazy with hearts and you're like, but I don't have those hearts. I would imagine if you're a crafter, you do have some hearts. But let's just go ahead and make something with mostly, with even just that. Now we have, we haven't used any of these. How do these stack up? Nice. I still want something vertical here. Um, I would, if I had a piece of the vellum, I would do the vellum. Here is just what it looks like with the uh, nice plaid. And let's go with, I've been using this small. So one of the things I really like, as I mentioned, is the twirliness of the linen that's on the spool, which is why I keep using mine up. And I have the original that used to be on a card, so it does not wrap. You can actually have them tendril over the sentiment and it looks just fine. So I just wanted to point that out. And then this is Highland Heather. So Highland Heather over the top of the Berry Bliss also goes nicely. So here is a Love You. Looking very nice. With sequins. And then there's, like I said, if you have little heart dies, 
you could add these little hearts, I mean hearts, flower dies. Uh, if you have them, you can turn your sprig into a little bit of a, if you want flowers. You don't need many, so you three is enough to make it look somewhat florally. Yeah, here's some, there's one piece I have not done anything with, and I am not sure how best to deal with it. Uh, but before I go there, I want to share with you Now there is, if I take this away, there is this purple bar. I don't think this will work. I have, I'm very bad at doing vertical cards, by the way. So if you trim this down a little bit, and you put one of these sprigs behind, You can even do a, a smaller one here and this bigger one. Let's see if that'll work. Trying to get me to do horizontal sentiments. Yeah, it's not terrible. Not terrible at all. I do wish I had cut uh, tiny gold hearts, or tiny gold hearts and tiny gold flowers. For the person who is embracing the floral elements, I don't know how many of you send out cards to your crafting pals, or do you at this point just give Valentine cards to like your spouse. I didn't give out Valentine cards until I started traveling. So there's that. There's this simple bow, just in a little nook somewhere. Some sequins. Give it a little zip. All right, so there's another piece. I did, this right here is the same as the, it's the, a basic embossing folder. There's three of them. And that's a web exclusive. It's not in any catalog. And Have somewhere. It's very dark in here. I might need to turn turn a bigger light on. Unless I like to. I was going to find my sanding block and I was going to sand this for us. But I don't know where I hid the sanding block. So this is full size. see if I can do another masculine horizontal trying to broaden my horizons so there's that just without having I guess that does work okay I would have to pop it up of course there are these labels that I have not used and I'm not really sure having not actually looked at the instructions what you're supposed to do with that that could be popped up and that's not bad I 
I think if I was at this point using some non-kit elements, I would have to add some vellum. Something to break it up. And then if it's too matchy-matchy, there is... If I had more than one of these, I could pop that up and have two very nice dark hearts. I just don't know where the other white... Oh, here's the white. I found this. So we're just trying to dress it up and make it make some sense to us. I don't know, can we do a cluster of three there? Would that be okay? And then to distract a little bit from it, we just stick that right there. So it's kind of like a little focal. And the only thing I'm missing here to make this make sense, oh, and I found it. And you know what? I actually made three white hearts. And they are three different patterns and that's how the the die comes. Okay. All right, what do you think of that? So that is another lovely masculine card. This this area just is the part that needs to be layered up or popped up and worked worked out. And then the last thing I told you I did not know if this particular embossing folder was still current. And I told you I thought it would go beautifully with this set. Here it is. I went ahead to show the emphasis. I've taken my craft white spot on the surface. So this is cupful gorgeous grape all the way through. Let's just see what we can do with this. I would like to have uh, trimmed it down a little bit, but as the time was getting darker and darker, I knew that I needed to get going on some filming. So let's try something like this. This popped up, of course. And you know, I've done my own loves. This was my inspiration for them. And then whether you would want to like trim this down and have some lavender popping up. And you know, there is this, oh, that's the big one. I would put that in the center. I want more than one sprig. So I would want a few sprigs. Three would be ideal, but I'm not going to worry about a third one. And then that that shifted itself. So this is called Painted Posies and it is already on the supplies list. If you wanted to, you could add another a bit of color. I just don't want to hide the fact that this is a lovely embossing folder that we've got. So I would make this dotted element smaller. Have that stretch that way and this stretch this way. Now let's see. Oops, and that heart went down. So We've got gold, 
and we do have all of the different hearts in gold as well. Again, I wish I would have done some tiny hearts in the gold. There, all three different hearts. This might be a bit much, but you never know. Somebody might like it. Like that, with that heart at an angle. I don't think I've ever used this painted posies. Uh, here, yeah, there is another shorty. So here's our third one. I like to do things in odd numbers. For some reason in nature, that seems to be the trick. So there's three of those and there's three hearts. And we'll get three sequins. And this is going to finish it off. I've got a lot of processing to do. I will definitely get this loaded up tonight. I hope that this gives you guys all sorts of ideas and ways that you can deal with the purple, change the purple. I could have done this color green. I could have done a green a Lost Lagoon. Would have been a good color to work with as an alternative to the Berry Burst if you were looking for a non-purple masculine color. I do think that in the watercolor wash, though there's purple in it, there is also, oh, and the tag. There isn't, there's a little bit of the blue, the dark purpley blue, uh, but the tag and that opposite tag, yeah, you would think that it would be sitting right here, wouldn't you? But it is not. And the only piece I didn't deal with is this. We have this square. Uh, and it's purple. So whatever we do with it, I just really didn't know of a good way to deal with the, the square. So let's see. Though I said I was done. I guess I'm not quite done. You know, you could hide some of it if you wanted and have it be another layer so that it isn't the top. There's this piece. Yeah, see, but then you lose too much of it. And if we try to go horizontal, uh, one possibility is that I didn't think of is cutting this up. If you wanted to use the corners and have it be like an underlayer, but you don't want to lose all of it, you could cut it in I would cut it in fourths and have like a little corner peeking out. Uh, so it's just going to be very difficult to find a good use for it. You know, it just seems like a waste to have only that much of it showing. If you made the floral element narrower, perhaps. Um, let's just go ahead with um, I think I want to try this. I might afterwards have to peek at the instructions to see what they did with this exactly. Here's three of these. And then, oh, there's always these. Yeah, I see that you could build this up. Oh, and then what about the love here? Oh, okay. I could see it. 
I hope you guys are seeing that this, this actually is a doable option. This is too short for me. I'd probably want to do something the full length. Where's my, my trim piece? Oh. Okay, so I think with a little more effort on my part, I could turn this into something. So this might have to be my first photographed design. I'll have to put it more, get it more together. And take a photograph. I think I'll put a little more green and I think it could work. Uh, there's always, I haven't done hardly anything with the Lost Lagoon, which so conveniently is the color of those hearts. I wonder if my husband thinks I'm crazy. I'm like the mad scientist in here. He will tell me, you know, that took you all day. All right, so there's that. And we've got some sprigs showing through, but if I have the love, yeah, I'm gonna have to work on this one. This one's not gonna be quite so easy. I could see if I just keep throwing more items here. Let me know what you guys think of this square piece. Yeah. I think that's somewhat doable. Not my favorite by any means. I do also have, to go with the hearts, I have these little sprigs that just add a little more interest. I have more sprigs. There's this little sprig. And another sprig there, and then I have a second one of these. So, there you go. And I've lost all of my sequins. Who knows where they're at? Here's one. I'm sure they're over here buried with my layers of designs. All right, like I said, I'm gonna take a picture of this so that I know I actually did something with it and that I didn't take out. All right, so that's it. That's all I've got. I really enjoyed this kit. It was a Definitely a challenge dealing with the all purple and coming up with some non-purple designs for you guys. And uh, I was definitely inspired and, and a little bit off on a tangent with doing the love with the fun um, outlining. And then, of course, I had to do the fussy cutting and thought I'd better bring out the brother. It hasn't had a lot of attention lately. Uh, let me know what you think of this kit and if there's any ideas I didn't think of. Do all the YouTube things, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.